Hoops fans, the newest offer from DraftKings is just too good to pass up. New customers can bet just $5 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's simple. Getting 30 to 1 odds on a single bet doesn't come every day. So take advantage of this opportunity while you can. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on the NBA with same game parlays. This week, me and Matt are back with our very own same game parlay. Ride along with the All the Smoke fam and let's get this money together. Head over to the DraftKings Sportsbook app to check out who we're riding with this week. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code SMOKE, bet just $5 on any pro basketball team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Been working a lot with Kanye of late. What's that experience been like? What is some stuff you learned? What, how was that energy and vibe between y'all two? Yeah, Kanye, uh, since me and Kanye had this freestyle battle, uh, I, was you at the Nike Town party? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and I feel like you was there. Yep. Um, me and Ye had this freestyle battle outside of this, uh, this Nike town on uh, Wilshire. Back in the day, it was a fly party. Everybody mm -hmm. was there. Chingy was there. <laughs> <laughs> Chingy was there. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> but, yeah, Chingy was there. Nelly was there. Yeah. And, like, these is the niggas. Like, these are the niggas with the most money, most chains, most bitches. So, yeah, me and Ye, uh, we, we end up freestyling outside of it. And, and you know, Ye, because of this punchlines, the chicks was like, I was, my shit was all gangster, you know what I'm saying? But I was going, but Ye had the punchlines and he had the women and so he he beat me that night. And, uh, but so ever since then, man, me and Ye, we've been locked in. Uh, I can remember getting my first beat CD with just K. Dot West on it, had like 12 beats on it, one of them was Dreams. Mm -hmm. And uh, we threw, you know, Dreams ended up being one of my biggest records. Um, but it, from there, Second album, Ye, again, Ye was with me on the second album. You know what I'm saying? He was he gave me Wouldn't Get Far, and we did it that night. As soon as I heard the beat, I was like, Wouldn't Get Far, fucking these rap stars. You know who you are. Put your hands up, lady. But, uh, and then Ye did his verse, and then we had, you know, another smash. But that been my brother um, throughout hip-hop. We had some times where he called me, and he was like, yo, you know, can you please stop talking about my wife? And I was, just like, <laughs> and I was like, you got that. And so I stopped yeah. until I started again. And then until it was I started like, again. And then, he, you know, he wouldn't talk to me for a while. I stopped and then, until I started again. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then, you know, we get in the studio and he always, he always joke around, you know, you know uh, like on the contrary of what people might think, like, yeah, is, uh, you know, he a comedian too, man. Mm -hmm. So he be shooting me shots. Um, sometimes and I, I be un he make me uncomfortable in the studio because so I be like, like why? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> why? why we gotta go there? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, Ye is uh, that's my brother. Always got his back, and you know a lot of people. I've been catching a lot of flack for saying um, Ye did for more for me in my career in the yeah, last two weeks yeah. than Dre did my whole career. Well, one thing Dre did was sign me, right? But Dre signed the hottest nigga in Compton. It didn't matter who was gonna sign me, I was gonna be yeah. the next nigga. So um, as far as Dre and Jimmy Iovine signing me to Aftermath and Interscope, they also did themselves a favor because they had picked up where Tupac left off in signing me, because I was gonna be the next nigga. So it's like, as much as Dre did for me in signing me, I did for him in bridging the gap for the West Coast. Cause, I mean, you have 50 and M, but you didn't have Nothing on the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? It meant a lot Snoop to get someone from the West Coast. independent and went through yeah. No Limit and, you know, all that. So it's like, as much as Dre did for me, um, I did for him. Um, and he'll tell you that if if we if we been honest. Um, and so when I say that Ye did for me, you know, more for me in those last two weeks than Dre did my whole career, it's like the conversations I had with Ye, the billionaire mindset that he put me in, the rooms that I walked in, I've never, Dre has never put me in those rooms. So it wasn't to say that Dre wasn't shit, he never did shit for me. I'm saying that my mindset and what I know now, my financial literacy, mm -hmm. just from being around this man, is more than I could ever repay him. And that mm -hmm. is absolutely more than Dre's done for me in my career because I can be, remember being signed to Aftermath and being damn near broke. Not saying that was Dre's fault, but niggas wasn't putting niggas on to no money. Like I wasn't part of the Dre the Beats uh, headphones deal, but mm -hmm. I was in the room when niggas was creating it. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm not saying niggas owe me nothing. Like, you don't, I don't, I don't wake up feeling like you owe me this or you owe me that. It's like the Super Bowl shit. I didn't feel like, like niggas owed me, you know, like I didn't feel like niggas owed me a call and put me on. I just felt like it's weird that I'm not there and the shit yeah. is in the SoFi Stadium and it's West Coast and mm -hmm. it's like, I felt like niggas should have, but I don't feel like they owe me that. You know what I'm saying? So. You been, uh, Talking recently about uh, uh, is it a versus or just a battle with M? With M? <clears throat> yeah. Talk about that. Um, that would it's be like, dope. 
again, and I and I hate to break it down like this, but I have to because it's gonna make the most sense to everybody. It's like, it's like when I just walked y'all down uh, memory lane with how, um, how the housing authority like regulated so that you know. African Americans or niggers mm -hmm. wouldn't ever be able to own nothing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that black people couldn't afford $9,000 and $10,000 homes. These homes back in the day cost $10,000, you know what I'm saying? And there was a lot of, you know, working class black people that could afford it. They just was it was clauses where they wasn't allowed yeah. to be in it. So we see where black people are now, right? Um and so they it, we've been in the pits of hell as far as like uh our financial literacy and our and just our financial status because niggas put weights on our shoulders and held us down. Well, they did the same thing to us with Eminem, right? Because I'm not saying Eminem is not a skilled rapper, right? But there are men goats out there. There are niggas out there that are maybe better than Kobe and Michael Jordan that will never make it to the NBA. And so I'm saying that Eminem is a, an outstanding lyricist, right? Now, you put him with Dr. Dre, who is from NWA, which, you know, easy helped create with Ice Cube and all them. And now Eminem has a a stamp. You put him under a machine, right? Interscope, one of the biggest and universal, which which is one of the biggest um, hip hop conglomerates as far as like when they put money behind something, it's gonna move. So they could damn near take this white guy right here behind the camera and tell him that this is who is next. And with the writers and with everything that Dre has and Interscope has under that building, niggas could make him a superstar. Or you, or you. Could have been a rap superstar coming under Dr. Dre and Interscope. So I'm saying that we were told that Eminem was the greatest. Oh, and by the way, he was white. And that had that played a, you know, a huge part in his success. Because if you can get white America, you know what I'm saying? Like, you are super solid as far as, like, album sales are concerned. And then who is he with? He's with Dr. Dre. So then we got niggas, too. So then it's that much bigger. Then Interscope puts the money behind it. You put the money behind a fucking uh, a pile of shit and, and you put shit on TV every day, it's only going to be a certain time before people be like, yo, we got to see it. We got to go smell that. <laughs> <laughs> got to go smell it. I'm, yo, I'm not. So I'm saying. Thanks. So they can literally, they can literally take a nigga who is just as skilled, don't put nothing behind him, and that nigga will never see the light of day mm. on the label. Mm. Does that mean that Eminem's better than that guy? No, it just means that he wasn't chosen. So when I say that, you know, I want a rap battle with Eminem or Eminem is not the greatest rapper or I'm better than him. It is you on draft night. Nigga, who? Mm -hmm. Did you think that Matt Barnes was better than you on yeah, draft night? Yeah, not at all. You know what I'm saying? And and again. <laughs> no. And, and no. And no, nah, no, nah, for real though. Hey, I think it's like not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, but I'm saying like, right. what, what? you got drafted what? Second round. We, we both Se got drafted yeah. at the end of the draft. Drafted yeah. second round. Yeah, yeah but everybody but nigga, was gone. But, we got but drafted. Look, but y'all household names. Now, you can't tell me that, what, second round, if you was what, thir uh, what 30th pick or 40th pick or something like that, that, the tw that you thought that 39 niggas was better than you on draft night. Yeah. You waited till your name was called, but you didn't, you seen, how many niggas you seen get up, you'd be like, nigga, I killed that nigga at so-and-so, or I will kill mm -hmm. him. And is that not, not the mindset you're supposed to have as God a warrior, right. as a competitor? So again, stop trying to make it seem like when I see Eminem, I'm going to drown this nigga or beat this nigga up. Right. I'm supposed to, number one, I'm supposed to think that I'm better than every single rapper, else why would I do this shit at all? Well, you, I, this is the only point I made, because I listen to Eminem too, but I tell this to people. Ain't nobody in our neighborhoods riding around listening to Eminem in their car. That's all I'm saying. Like, we ride to you. We, You know what I'm saying? But Eminem, like, we know his songs and the Renegade and all that, but we not riding and around yeah. full deep listening to Eminem, and, dog. Yo, we just not look, doing that. And, we just not again, doing that. I'm when just, have you the ever, truth. And, I, and I, I'll take it away from you. When have you ever heard an Eminem song in the club? When have you ever heard this shit in the locker room when niggas like, yo, this is the new M. I'm about to go crazy out here when they do this tip off, nigga. So again, <laughs> so again, so again, it must happen when niggas is training for the Olympics or or some shit or when when white boys is surfing, dude, or doing what the fuck they doing. Because I mean, I don't, I'm, and I'm not taking away from them. I don't hear Eminem in the streets. I just don't. Yeah. And so again, it's like it's it's not saying that he can't rap. The skill set is there. Mm -hmm. I'm just a better rapper. Mm -hmm. I just haven't been given the light that he's been given. They didn't put the money behind me that they did. They put some, but as soon as I as soon as I showed my ass and showed I was a little too black for what they expected, well, the budget stopped. Mm. I could have been pushed to Eminem heights. Fifty got pushed to those heights because he played nice, and Eminem and him are like this. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't even know that M wouldn't even do the Super Bowl unless Fifty was on it. If Fifty, if Dre put Fifty on the on the Super Bowl, Eminem wouldn't have showed up. 
So again, that's their camaraderie. So they put the money behind the, the niggas who played nice. And when them niggas told me, you know, a lot of people don't know this. Like 50 and, uh, and Jimmy Iovine, they, they gave me a million dollars to, uh, to stop saying GU not. They wrote me a check. They bought it. Bought the tra- I had the trademark to GU not. And you remember when I was going around with the rat and doing yeah. all that shit? That shit yeah. hurt, killed G Unit. You stopped seeing the candy, the candy cane tank tops and all that shit. All the, the whole G Unit, Mark Echo, all this, the shoes, all that shit died. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That shit was a hot commodity at once. G Unit clothes. The niggas was wearing the sweats, the headbands, the masks. White beaters, all Everything. That, that shit real. died, bro. And then so they had to pay me. I should have asked for more, but the niggas gave me a million. But then I'm a hood nigga. So I'm like, a, ch- y- a million dollars just to stop seeing this word? <laughs> yeah. With a check. That's they crazy. wrote the check and I stopped saying it. So again, they suppressed the movement. You know what I'm saying? And so I had to, you know, fall over here. And after a while, like, they stopped giving me the budget. So as you start seeing, like, my record sales start declining, it wasn't that I wasn't still the same rapper I was. It was that they wasn't putting my shit on TV and pushing pushing it at radio like they used to, like they was doing because I was honorary and I was too disrespectful, borderline disrespectful, uh, so Buster would have it. But yeah, if you don't play nice in these buildings, nigga, you know what it is. You are, your career is Martin Luther King on the balcony. Hmm. And they will kill your career in front of your homies. And Jesse Jackson will be left to tell the story. Hmm. Like niggas will see this interview, and of course, they'll, or any interview that I've done, they'll say, oh, Game says he's the better rapper than Eminem. I said that, but I also gave him mm. his flowers and said that he's mm-hmm. a pretty good lyricist. He's just not better than me. And if he is better than me, I want to see. 